Welcome back to Uncaged from Talk Sport. I'm Adam Catterall. Pleasure to be in your company, and it's a pleasure to be in the company of PFL featherweight Brendan Lochnane, who is in action this week. That's right, man. Not only is he going to be reviewing fights for you, he's also going to be previewing his own fight coming up uh, on today's show. How are you, mate? Mate, I'm t- hungry, Adam. Hungry. Yeah, imagine fighting and talking about fighting all in the same week. Listen, UFC 300, no doubt, has got you right in the mood, mate. The amount of violence that was floating around the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas will have had you on the edge of your seat. Them knuckles would have been itchy. You've only got a few more days to wait, sunshine. Keep the hands in your pocket. You'll get done for carrying loaded weapons around Chicago. <sighs> mate, are you joking? I was in some random pub in Chicago running around like a, like a lunatic. Should have seen me doing circles around the, the pool table. Ah, wow. It was literally one of them moments, wasn't it? Unbelievable. Uh, listen, if, if, you, if you're wondering as well, these lads keep doing this show from different locations. Yes, I know. It's been a bit ma- manic, right? He was in Thailand last time we did the programme. I was in Vegas last week. Now I'm back home. He's in Chicago. At some point, we might, might just get to the same location together. But this is a, a universal language, the universal language of uh, mixed martial arts. It goes all over the globe, and we are hopefully going to be getting you closer to these fights as this channel progresses. Little reminder, please subscribe to the TalkSport MMA YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of our stuff. Right, let's get stuck into it. I'm on record, mate, saying it's the greatest fight card of all time, UFC 300. It was stacked from bottom to top, and it didn't disappoint, mate. It was definitely the best fight card I've watched live. It had the most thrill that I've had during a a fight card. It had me on the edge of my seat from start to finish. And, I mean, Adam, if they could do that every week, then, you know, we'd be in for a treat, wouldn't we? But that's what made it so special. It was UFC 300. It needed them moments, and it had it. What's it like watching it as a fighter? Because as a fan, you just lose your mind with it. Is it exactly (laughs) the same? Can, can, Can you completely take yourself out of the professional realm and just enjoy and kick back? Because you had a few mates on this card as well competing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I was disconnected from it, you know. I was like, right, I'm just going to watch this from an outside perspective as a fan, um, which I always do, really. Unless someone's really close to me, unless it's like the Tills or someone that's really, really close to you, you kind of disconnect and watch it as a martial arts fan. And wow, absolutely (laughs) incredible. Um, Loads of them moments, Adam, that you, you watch fights for where it's all just... And then, boom! And it had so many of them moments, and yeah, it was a buzz, mate. It wasn't, especially watching it here in America, in like the local bars. You realise how big it actually is over here now. It yeah. is, it's it's massive, mate, as you know. Well, Vegas was on fire. I was lucky enough to be in the T-Mobile Arena. We've got a few talking points to get stuck into, and I'm going to get stuck yep. into this first and foremost. Main event was the light heavyweight championship. Alex Pereira taking on Jamal Hill. <sighs> he has got the left hook from hell. <sighs> Takes out Jamal Hill, retains his belt, and here's a question for you, because you will have seen the picture. The picture's doing the rounds on the social media, my man. Tom Aspinall was there. Oh, no, no, are you going for celebration? I saw what you were doing there. The celebration was absolutely sensational. But Tom Aspinall was in attendance, and he was looking at him. And in the post-fight interview, Pereira says, listen, man, I'm just here doing my thing, but I'm looking for a heavyweight. How does Pereira get on at heavyweight? I will... I think he can fight anyone on earth at any weight. I'll never put anything past that man. The way he was setting up that jab to the body, jab to the body, and then bang, and even give her Dean a little, you just chill, mate. You just chill. <laughs> let me let me get on with my business. Took a massive nut shot at him and went, don't worry about it. I just got it done. Madness. That's elite savagery, isn't it? Herb. Wow. Listen, don't step in now, man. We're not pausing the action. I'm going to punish him. No, hold on, Adam. He didn't even look at me. Went like that. I did. <laughs> just, 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 you just chill over there with whatever you think. You're not stopping this. I've got business to take care of. You know what it was? I know what that was as a fighter. He'd made his read. He knew that that hand was dropping off that, and he thought that left hook's there. You're not stopping this momentum now. Bang! That's what that was. And then the composure to be able to deliver the. <sighs> Very scary individual, Adam. Very, very scary, cerebral individual he is, isn't he? Indeed. I'm going to be honest with you, though, mate, right? And correct me if you think I'm being biased towards someone that we know very, very well. I think Tom Aspinall can take him. No, I do. Of course I do. Listen, he's so well-rounded, Tom. He could switch that at any point, get the boxing going, 
double leg, and we know how good Tommy's on the ground, and efficient, um, and he could easily do that to him. So I think it's a bad matchup for Pereira, um, Tomas Molivar, due, due to the size and the way Tom can mix it up. I really do think he might have a bit of more than he can chew with Tomas Benal, that's for sure. But he's earned the opportunity, in my opinion, pal. Eight yeah. fights now in the UFC, multi-weight world champion. Last five Incredible. fights have been against guys that have either been champion or a former champion or maybe went on to champion. Five on the spin UFC belt holders, and he's laid them all out. So if yeah. he wants to have a little bit of a dance in his ninth fight up at heavyweight, who are we to stand in his way? No, I agree. And every single time he's fought, he's delivered. And he said what he's going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And he kept doing it. But there's only one Thomas for the, You know what I mean? Like, you're not coming here to England, mate, and taking our champion out. Not, not, not on our watch. You know, Adam, tell him. How mind-blowing would it be if they booked Aspinall Pereira for Manchester in the summer? Yeah, I mean, that's the fight, in it? I would love to see that fight. Would you, as a fan, Adam, come on? Ah, listen, as a fight, absolutely. Alex Pereira, I think, has become a real fan favourite for the majority of people. The way that he's been delivered at middleweight and light heavyweight, he's been sensational. He's a knockout artist. You know what he wants to do. Yeah. It's just that these elite guys... It, it's funny how some... It, it can't be stopped because... Because he's so good at setting it up, because he's so good at disguising it, Look at all that. Look at what he's doing. He's knocking people out with that left hook for fun. Elite level guys. He sets it up beautifully. Yeah, he does. And that is, and that's the intriguing thing. Can he set it up on Tom Aspinall? I would back that he can't because Tom yeah, is far much more than Agreed. just a stand and banger. He's an elite mixed martial artist. He himself has elite feints, hasn't he? Yeah. But I want to find out. And are we forgetting he beat Francis Ngannou's punch record as well? Can we just touch on that one? Go for can, it. We, can we can we touch on the fact that this man, yeah, who fights well, he's fought middleweight before, and he like yeah. has beat Francis Ngannou's punch record by a considerable amount as well. Not just touched it, went well past it. That makes him the hardest puncher to ever punch that machine, which has been punched by nearly every fighter in the UFC. So this is the type of power you're dealing with him. Then you're dealing with elite level setups from Glory. The way he sets things up is different. And then you're also dealing with a guy that when Dana White announces a 300 down bonus, sits there and goes, I don't care while everyone else is jumping around. <laughs> it was mental. It, and it is. He's the whole package, isn't he? He is. And I think it actually makes him more savage that he doesn't speak too much English. Yeah, so we I don't actually it. know what's going on in his mind. I kind of like it. that. He's like a He's bomb just... buddy, mate. He's like a bomb buddy. It, it's, it's fantastic. It, the UFC needed him. And he come yeah. at the right time. I really do believe that. And he's just this figure now, isn't he? He's just this figure that they've got, the body, like you said. And they needed it, and that is him. He, uh, he brought that punch machine, uh, by the way, with his right hand. And he's been knocking out everybody with his left hand. You don't want to, you don't want to get clipped off this fella. Hands <sighs> are absolute stone. Fantastic performance from Alex Pereira. Keeps his belt. Uh, and um, listen, who knows what's next? If he wants to dance at heavyweight, I'm sure there's something there. And I'm sure there's a few contenders at light heavyweight that want it as well. Um, the big story, though, even though Alex Pereira did deliver, the big story is Max Holloway. Let's not mess about, man. Let's get yep, stuck let's into get it. Let's get to it. The BMF title was on the line. Justin Gaethje uh, was the champion, taking on Max Holloway, a man stepping up from £145 to 155 And boy, did Max deliver. It wasn't just necessarily about the last 15 seconds. It was a clinic from start to finish. But... We're going to start at the back of the fight, mate. Is it the greatest moment in UFC history? They've had many. Yeah. But given the context well, of the fight and given the guy that was doing it and who he was doing it against, how big was that in the context of all the historical moments? Yeah, well, I want to touch on something I said last week. I was like, oh, this BMF title and all that. But I take it all back, mate. I take it back. The B <laughs> Listen... <laughs> You're all I'm in like, now. You're I'm all like, no, in. No. What I'm saying is that might be the most popular and famous belt in the world right now after what I've just seen. <laughs> and it is like, you look at the guys that are fighting for it, the Poriers, the Gaethjes, the Holloways, and then all of a sudden it's one of them fights where it's like, oh, this is a great fight. And it turned from great to astonishing, astounding. I don't know what the word is, but it was one of them moments where I was running around a pool table in a, in a, in a pub in Chicago. Ah, the whole place was going mad. 
I can't even imagine what it was like to be there, but I know a few people that were there, like yourself, and just said, Brendan, I can't put it into words. Uh, so it yeah, definitely ranked up there. I'm trying to think of a better moment, and I can't in the top of my head right now after watching the sport my whole life. We, we've had some iconic ones. Connor against Aldo. True. Leo, Leon's moment against Usman. I mean, we True. could go on and on for the iconic moments that have happened in the UFC. But the context of it, Max Holloway was stepping up in weight to take on the BMF. Justin yeah, Gaethje, yeah. who's in a bit of a purple patch right now. He's flying, just knocked out Dustin Poirier, beating Raphael Fazeev in good fashion as well. He was yeah. coming into this hot number one contender at lightweight. He's going to be fighting Islam Makachev. Everybody thought the highlight was going to deliver a highlight. And then the last 15 seconds are obviously the talking point. But the first 24 and a half True. minutes, Mike Holloway puts on a clinic, man. He puts on an absolute clinic. But this is the best bit for me. Round number four, at start of round number four, I put a tweet out and I said, listen, Holloway's, <laughs> he's absolutely walking this 3-0. Yeah, yeah. Getch, you need something special. Getch, he comes out and drops Max Holloway for the first yeah. time in Max Holloway's his career. career. Yeah. And wins that round. And everybody's like going, oh my God, this is on. It's absolutely on. This is tremendous. Then, then, in the last 15 seconds, when this fight is absolutely done and, and all written off, Holloway gives Gaethje the opportunity to level it. <laughs> I've, I've, I've won the fight. I've won it. So I respect you that much. And I know that you do this for me. Let's just stand here and duke it out. And whoever lands wins. Well, listen, it's not Holloway's first rodeo. I've seen him do it against Lamas. I've seen him do it against a few other people. It's something inside that Hawaiian warrior spirit where he's just like, I'm going to give you a chance to level this up. Do you think he cared that he was up three rounds? He didn't care. Do you think he cared how much money was on the line? He didn't care. All he cared about was that moment right there. Last 10 seconds. Let's get the crowd going. Let's have it. If I lose, I lose. And that embodies what the BMF really is, don't it, Adam? Like, that's what that title was made for. Four moments like that. Four special fighters like him. It was truly unbelievable, mate. Here's a scenario for you, because it didn't stop there for him. He got on the microphone, he calls out Ilya Tapuria, who was cage side. Sensational call out. He can go back down now to 145 and have a Oof. tremendous knock. Then, wow. in the aftermath of this event, and we'll talk about it in a moment, Conor McGregor's coming back against Michael Chandler. Now, oh. if Conor McGregor's successful against Michael Chandler, the BMF belt does not hold weight. It can go anyway. It doesn't carry scales, the BMF belt. Imagine the rematch of Conor McGregor versus Max Holloway. Doesn't matter what weight, it, what, what weight it's at. You could do it at 155. You could do it at 170 if you want. Do you think Max Holloway's bothered? He's a gladiator. He ain't bothered about getting on scales, man. He'll just rock and roll. Yeah, I mean, you are right now that I think about it. This BMF title doesn't hold any weight divisions. Doesn't hold any specific restrictions, really, does it? So no. this this could be the belt that everyone wants to see, the most sought after belt in MMA, the way it's looking at the minute. I mean, Connor coming back, then you've got guys like Dan Hooker, throw Dan Hooker in the mix, guys like that that are just ready to go out on the shield and have it. And I mean, yeah, let's touch on the Michael Chandler thing as well, because that just got slipped in at the end, didn't it? That just got slipped in that McGregor's fighting. After we already just watched this insane show, we're in the post fight going, oh yeah, just to let you know, McGregor's fighting as well. We're like, wow, what else is coming here tonight? It was it was a massive monumental moment for the UFC, 300. Then to have that, to back it up with an announcement and a date. And one thing I know about Conor McGregor, and you know Adam, when he puts his name and a date and it's signed, he shows up no matter what injuries he's got. We've seen in the past... We've had all types of injuries with Connor. Broken legs, mate, I'm hearing. He even knew half about that and shown up. So we know we're getting Connor on that day. It's exciting. Can't wait for it. Listen, we'll do a little bit more on that announcement in a minute. But just as a little bit of a roundup from UFC 300, let's take a little bit of a look back at our predictions from last week. I'm going to be honest, I've had a shocker here, pal. I've had an absolute shocker. But this I is a sign, in my you. opinion. Listen, I think it's a sign of it being a good card yeah, because yeah, we've had such a shocker. Both of us went for Cody against Davidson Figueredo. Davidson was absolutely tremendous. Amazing. Um, really good finish from him. Jim Miller didn't come through against Bobby Green. Bobby Green was just too slick. He, he looked great. He, he did look great, didn't he? He looked great. Uh, 
the most impressive UFC debut for a bit. We've been speaking about Chandler when he bounced into his debut against Dan Hooker. That was incredibly impressive. But Kayla Harrison doing what she did to Holly Holm. We got it right. We told you that it was going to happen. But I don't think any of us thought that it was going to be a ragdoll session. That was unbelievable from Kayla Harrison, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like it just shows the levels. Like Especially now, as a PFL fighter, I was happy to see her come over and do that because the level over here is very, very high. So for her to be a champion and go into the UFC, take the number five contender and do it the way she did, it was great to watch for me as a fan outside as well. Al Jermaine Sterling came through against Calvin Cater. We both predicted that. So at the moment, we're two for two. 50%, not bad. We both went for Alexander Rakic. And do you know something? For half of this fight, mate, I thought we were going to be right. And then Yuri Prohachka comes from nowhere. What was that about? It, it was a good bet, mate. He got his legs blasted off. I don't know how he standed through all that. Like That was still a good bet, Adam. That was one of the moments where Yuri Prohachka didn't read the script. He ripped it up, threw it out and went, I'm winning this. Absolutely. Bo Nickel did Bo Nickel thing against Cody Brundage. Listen, it wasn't one that set the fans on fire, but he got the job done. So me yep. and you are currently three from three. And this is where you take the lead, my friend, because in Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarukian, you went Sarukian, I went Oliveira. We got a split decision. It was a hell of a fight. As a guy that... L- I, at one point, I was watching that, and I just kicked back and I went, this might be the highest level of mixed martial arts. <sighs> I have ever watched in my life. Both of them back and forth. It was brilliant. It was incredible. So I can't believe the way how, how Saruki managed to negate the famous Charles Oliveira chokes. You know, in such and he was he was amazing. It was good the way he was mixing the levels, the way he was shooting and getting around him. And Charles was usual Charles. I feel like Charles could have done a little bit more though. Adam, I'll be honest. I felt like on the feet he was being yeah. very hesitant. Well, that's due to the wrestling of our man. So there's no shame in that. <laughs> Two more rounds. Rematch it. Two more rounds. Let's have five rounds with with them two going at it. Uh, We both went for Justin Gaethje. Sorry, Max. We let you down, son, because that was a clinic. We we both got that one badly wrong. Uh, Zhang Weili came through against Yan Zhaonan. I thought it would be a far more clinical performance. I know that it's it's wide, 49-45 on all the cards, but that doesn't tell the tale of the story. Because on the feet, I actually thought Yan Zhaonan was better, mate. Very, very, very clinical performance. I mean... It, 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 you know, that I don't really see too much of her opponent. Wei Li, I know very well. I've trained with her at Bangtao before. But yeah. this girl, this girl really impressed me that she fought. She was good everywhere. She was so tough. She weathered the storm and yeah. came back with her own storm. And then in like champions fashion, Wei Li overtaking in the fifth round, overcoming the adversity. It was great to watch. Mate, she got chopped out at the end of the first round. And still came back for more. Mad. Tremendous stuff from Yan Xiaonan. Unreal. She didn't want to lose. Some people just no. don't want to lose. And she did not want to lose that night. Love that. And in the main event, we both got it right with Alex Pereira. So this week, you take it, mate, by one. By that Armand Sarukian pick. Well done, lad. You managed to take the predictions. Uh, I look forward to getting stuck into that again when it comes round to UFC 301 which might be a little bit more difficult. Um, fight of the night was uh, the BMF title fight. Both guys getting the bonus there. Mike's got a performance bonus too, uh, as did Yiri Prahachka. So congratulations to all those guys that, and girls that picked up their uh, 300k uh, checks. We've just touched upon it briefly there. Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler, UFC 303, International Fight Week, uh, June 27th. It's going to be something quite special. It's been rumoured for a bit because there were the coaches on tough. They've been back and forth. Connor's been getting himself back fit. I know that he's been in the testing pool for absolutely ages. He's had loads of obligations outside the octagon with movies yep. and brands and all that type of stuff. You know him well. You've been in the gym with him. Before he went away on the movies, was he firing? Was he ready to go? Are we going to see a, a solid version of Conor McGregor back in the octagon? This has made me so happy that this is now official and been announced. Because I know that this man, me and you have talked about this, Adam, and he's openly talked about it. We can have all the money in the world. We could do any movies and all that. This man wants to get locked in a cage and have a fight. That's what he wants to do. Like myself, this is what we are. We're gladiators, we're warriors. He's finally got a date. He's finally got an opponent. He can, you know, he can silence the exterior now and home in and we get to see the Conor McGregor. I'm excited. I really am. It's, it's exactly what the sport needed, especially after 300. Just yeah. throwing his name in the mix. It's going from up to up again. As well as that, 
for those that missed it, because obviously you hear the name Conor McGregor and it might, everything else might go under the radar, Islam Makachev is back. And I'm delighted about this. He's one of my favourites, is Islam. I think he's been brilliant recently, but a bit of an activity at the start of the year. I anticipated to see him at the start of the year defending his lightweight crown. Um, he's got an opponent for UFC 302. We're going to do it in New Jersey the month before, obviously, Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler. And it's going to be against Dustin Poirier. What do you make about that? Interesting fight. Interesting because, you know, we all seen the um, the Khabib fight and how that went. And people, I don't know, I think I think Makachev might be better than Khabib. The way I'm watching him recently, he's got better striking. Yeah. He's, uh, I don't know, he just looks, he looks more well-rounded. He's like, Sometimes we'd see shades of Khabib looking uncomfortable on the feet at times and he'd rush for them. To... Islam will knock you out, submit you, outpoint you, out-wrestle you. He can do everything. Um, and after after watching Poirier in his last fight, what an amazing, amazing performance from him. That one's got my mouth watering big time. His performance against Benoit saint Denis has earned that opportunity. Amazing. It just goes to show, it's not necessarily about being on a win streak or anything like that. It's the manner of the victories in this. Does it get the fans on the edge of your seat? Does it get you excited? Dustin Poirier is absolute guaranteed entertainment. He's come through a great win against Benoit Saint-Denis and he's got the champion interested. Islam Makachev called for this. Let's go, man. Let's do it. And it's an opportunity for Dustin Poirier to roll the dice again. Might be his last opportunity at a UFC title, given where he's at in his career, mate. Um, but Islam Makachev... Back in action against Dustin Poirier, all set for an absolute cracking lightweight world title fight uh, next month. Uh, now then, before we clear off, I think it's only fair that we do a bit of a preview of what's coming up this Friday. Eh? Who's in action this week? Who's in action this week, are they? Look at this lad. Uh, Big smile on his face. Is this lad from Manchester? He already likes a right tear up, yeah? Friday night. I reckon I'll be on Adam Wright. We've done all these maths before, haven't we? We've been stuck in the maths before. Have you? Have you got the official time? Because I'll just be, I'll just be guessing it. I haven't. You're, you're. Are you uh, the Coleman? Coleman, Chicago. Um, it starts about nine p.m. main card here, so we'll do a bit of maths and we'll let everyone know. <laughs> I reckon you're going to be in and around midnight UK, in and around that time. But I'll get an official thing out on social media. Yeah, uh, please. Once, once that's all confirmed from the PFL. Uh, taking on Pedro Cavallo, who is a, listen, seasoned pro, being in with some good guys, won some, lost some. Um, as a matchup, I think this works very nicely for you, mate. Pedro, I think me and Pedro are in a pretty similar position at the minute. Like, if you look at our losses, I lost to the two champions, Movlid and um, Pinedo. And then you look at his, he lost to Pico and Pitbull. So we're kind of like, you know, world-class level, but we've got losses against other world-class people. So this is a statement from Brendan. Trust me, Adam, when I say there's a statement incoming from this man here. Yeah, you know, it's been a long camp. It's It's been a point to prove to myself, especially after my last fight. Had to drag myself off the canvas, literally drag myself off the canvas, pull it all together again. When let's have it right, I've had a great career, made some good money. No one will take the world title off my mum's mantelpiece, but I'm doing this for me now. I'm doing this because I want to fight and I want to keep painting pictures like the artist that I am. And Friday night will be no different, mate. Did you? Were you ever concerned that the fire might not come back? <sighs> I mean, it was always there. It was, the fire was always there. It's just that, you know what it is? Like, I've never been knocked out, ever. I've had over 50 fights, Adam. I've never been knocked out. I'd only ever been dropped once before against Kudo. So it was a proper foreign experience. I'd never had it. It never happened in the gym or anything. So when it happened, it took me a while to process it. And then that's when I got the Conor McGregor training. And that kind of fired me up again because we was having great rounds. And then I, his backhand tested the chin a few times and I realised, oh, the chin does still work. Because sometimes you think, well, is that it now? Does, does it just never work again after this point? And uh, I realised that, yeah, it was just a moment in time. It's passed. Since then, um, I got to myself to Thailand on Christmas Day, like I said. It's been a long camp and I feel great and I'm really looking forward to painting a pitch on Friday night. The thing is, with that knockout, and I'm sorry to take you back to it, if you actually analyse that knockout, it's, it's kind of a freak knockout 
because he's fully not intending to do that particular move because you're doing something else and you end up landing in a position where it wasn't you were, you're not supposed to be there and his knee's not supposed to be there either if that makes sense does that make sense or not it does, but I won't take it like that. I don't want to be the guy that's going to make excuses like it was an accident from Pinedo and all that. Like, Listen, I'll, I get, I'll do I it get, for you. Then. I get what you say. I get what you say, Adam. But it came up at a weird angle. Correct. It wasn't like a right hand that I didn't see, and it was yes. over. It was a weird angle, weird transition. Tall guy, knee just come up out of nowhere as I'm ducking. One of them. Let's not. He's take not away. intending to knee you. He's intending to kick you. But you've come in too close. Is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. I know you're not going to yeah. take it away from him. I'll get yeah. the abuse for it. No problem. He's. It. I know what I saw. He's intending yeah, to kick you and you're shooting in and you've caught the knee on the way in. It's not supposed to be there. It's a freak moment which doesn't normally happen. So mm. that if, if, listen, if I'm a fighter, I'm sat there going, I can take that because it's not like I've bitten on something and someone's cracked me. It's not like I've missed something. It's one of those. It can happen. It can happen. So... We're expecting a show then on Friday night, are we? I go back to my old mantra when anyone asks me about it. I stayed in the shower long enough and I got wet, Adam. There you like, go. If you knock you about go. this sport long enough, you will get caught. But yeah, it's lit the fire back up. It's made me double sharp, double focused. And Friday night, I swear, I say it every time, you're going to get the best Brendan Lockney and clip this because we'll put this on after the win and we'll add it to it. You're getting the best Brendan, no injuries, no nothing. Great, great camp, great team. And I'm going to put on a show for you all in Manchester. So stay up, have a few beers and watch it. And an exciting season to be a part of as well. PFL going from strength to strength. The company has done a wonderful thing over the last 12 to 24 months. And for British and Irish MMA... It's, it's Listen, it's an attractive thing uh, this weekend. People like Brett Johns as well, also involved uh, on the card too. You know what it is? It's just a great time to be in MMA and Adam. Like, everything's like this now. Everyone's starting to realise how amazing this sport actually is. And, like, there was random people in that bar in Chicago when I was watching UFC, and they were all just turning their heads because what is everyone fixated on the thinking? Why is everyone stuck on this telly? And it's for moments like that that we've seen... The PFL's on the rise, the UFC's on the rise, the sport's on the rise. As a collective, everyone's pulling together on it and it's a great time to be in MMA. So there you have it. The big man's in action this week. Make sure you're tuning into him. We'll get you a time as to exactly when this boy will be in the smart cage uh, on the PFL show coming out of Chicago. So make sure you keep your eyes on that. Uh, and he'll be back next week to review his own fight. That's right. And wow. we'll be building up to some other stuff that is coming up in the not-too-distant future too. So make sure you subscribe to the TalkSport MMA YouTube channel where me and him preview and review shows on a weekly basis. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>